Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series and Ireland are back-to-back -back champions. What's going on in the background there, Elko? <laughs> A little bit of celebrating, a little bit of celebrating, but we made hard work of it, made hard work of it. Still, congratulations. Back-to-back -back championships is thoroughly deserved. They were the best team in the tournament. And yeah, it was one of those days today, wasn't it? They had to fight for every inch on a day where there was a bit of, you know, wet weather. It was a little bit troublesome. And they came up against a Scottish team that I thought were really impressive in their physicality. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was um, you know, I, I was... Didn't even realise I, I switched onto the game late. Um, I was like, "Where's our fullback? What is going on?" Oh no, not again! We've lost someone in the warm up. Um, Larmer came in, uh, and yeah, and, and Scotland were were very uh, combative as we thought we they'd be, uh, and, and sort of looked at what England did last week and attacked us at gain line. There was clearly a lot of um, tension in Aviva. Um, particularly off the back of last week. Um, I don't think that was necessarily because there was a Six Nations on the line. I just think because the ex you know, expectation of a big performance was there. So um, we got the win and um, I guess that's all that counts, really. It is all that counts. Well, kind of. A draw would have done as well for you, really. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but it was tense. It was so tense and it was quite quiet as well, especially early doors. Scotland started pretty well. You know, when they got through phases, they looked not like they were tearing Ireland apart by any means, but they looked content on the ball. They looked comfortable to go through phases and got a penalty early doors as well. So a 3-0 lead and the, the crowd was quiet. Yeah, they, they got an early settler. Um, and I think that heaped more, even more pressure on, on the, the guys in green. And, um, you know, I, I truly think it was a, we spoke about this in our, in our pre-match amble that, 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 um, there was more pressure on Ireland to to come out, and there was less pressure on Scotland. And Scotland were good, really good, but I thought at times they were a little bit anonymous. I thought Finn today was not as great as he can be. You know, he was. It was almost like he, I never heard his name really. He didn't do anything, um, and that was probably in one way clever because I guess they thought that Ireland would come and target him, and he was trying to to, to give ball to to his twelve and thirteen, but. Um, you know, in the back, in the in the backs, I thought they were quiet, but in up front, I thought Scotland were way better than we've seen before against Ireland. You know, traditionally, uh, if you if you talk to any Irish fan, they, they always talk about a Scottish sort of, sort of soft underbelly and and how 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 poor they are up front. Today, I thought it was it was very equal, and um, bar scrum time until Porter went off. Um, but uh, I think Scotland really gave Ireland a proper proper uh, sort of inspection up front today. Yeah, one other player that I want to pick up from Scotland as well. And this is a tricky one, right? And this is Duan van der Merwe. He got turned over a couple of times when it, you know, I think in commentary they said he's trying to do it all himself. But that is one of his USPs, right? He can, you know, bash through tackles, batter people out of the way and all that kind of stuff. He's just got to decide when the moment is, when is his best opportunity to go forward. And I just thought he got that wrong a couple of times today. It led to yeah. turnovers and, and that was a benefit for Ireland. Yeah, I, I heard that on commentary as well. I thought it was a little bit harsh from Darcy to to say that because the whole point, the, the reason why he's so good is because he takes it all on himself, and 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 that and sometimes it goes for you and sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, you can say, oh, you know, he should be getting other players into it, but you know, his USP is that he takes people on, and 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 there's a lot of great players that have come before him, Drico for us and things like that that would that would have games where you go uh, but that's that's why he's so good and I think, I think a little bit harsh I can take the point but um it, you know it's up to the 14 guys around him to create and as tough as a winger as well when you're out in the wing you're, you're trying to look for work and do things different if you're a 10 or a 12 or 13 or something or a nine um a little bit harsh I thought he was quiet today but I think that's more so because Ireland thoroughly respected the threat that was there from from him um he's such a great player yeah, and the other thing that Scotland did was not commit many players to rucks at all. They're really patient on defence. They got their spacings right. Just stayed really disciplined until the last minute because it's so easy against Ireland to start biting in on dummy runners and all this kind of stuff. And Scotland just stayed really, really good shape and just made their tackles in the first half. Yeah, got another got another penalty as well, and it was you know it's tight. Yeah, and I, I think this is this is the worry as an Irish fan. It's like I think teams are starting to work us out. 
um, much like we have worked other teams out that you can, you know, stand off, let them do whatever they're going to do and be soft. And, um, you know, as much as England last week pressed them, they also were very clever in, in, in softening when they needed to. And Scotland were really, really clever today, I think, in, in, in letting it develop in front of them. And then when it was on attack and you're right, they, they didn't, source the rooks with any number really in the first sort of 20 30 minutes they chuck the tackler in maybe one but then got out and numbered out and you know Ireland looked pretty pretty um you know not rusty but not not as clinical as we've seen before they just couldn't break down um I, th- I think I think someone said in commentary you know, they were quite happy to, to let Ireland have the ball and then sit and, and tackle and, and let them make mistakes. And there was a few mistakes. Yeah. Talking about Ireland getting the ball, something we've seen in this championship, which has been a really refreshing change for me, is we've seen a lot more inventiveness from kickoffs. Uh, there was a time, like last season, and well, for a number of years now, where peak teams just kick the ball long, that's it, and, and game on. But Ireland, after conceding that first penalty, kicked short to regain and got the ball back. And I thought that was a real interesting... Uh, tactical choice that they wanted to get the ball back so early in the game. Yeah, it's it's clever again. I, I presume from the from coaching, maybe, maybe players that um, you know you almost get into a routine of kick long, you kick out, we exit, and then we have an attacking play from there or whatever it is. And um, maybe they saw something in videos or whatever it is to to try something and. But it, it, but what it also does, it shows intent and it gives players energy and it gives crowd energy. And that's so important, I think. And we saw in both games today around getting the the, the energy within a team. I, I thought Ireland looked very tired in the first half. I thought we looked, we needed moments in the game to spark us. And Scotland were very good at limiting that. But you're right, that we, we got that from, from that moment. Yeah, completely. I mean, we need to talk about the try. Sheehan and 14 minutes. It's an absolute gift with an overthrown five-metre line-out. And it was overthrown as well. I was looking at the jump and the lift. They all seem to be pretty much on the money. And the fact that Ireland didn't get up to compete makes it look even worse. But of course, the hooker doesn't know that when he's throwing the ball. He's got to throw it double tops. And uh, yeah, it was a good sort of half a metre too high. Yeah, hooker to hooker. Oh, (laughs) That is a that is a blow. Honestly, I've never done that. Um, mainly because in my day, the hooker would never stand at the back of the lineup. But yeah, that's that's got to hurt big time. And yeah, he just flopped over the line and try time sort of thing. And there was a bit of the she and I got kind of driven into touch just before that. And there was a bit of sparkiness between him and Van der Merle and everything else. And and that, yeah, massive sucker punch for Scotland. You talk about energy that would have really been a big blow to, to the Scots big time. Yeah, huge. And so, but then it got to, it was 7-6 at half time and super nervy. Like I really, if Scotland could continue that pressure, continue absorbing what they were doing quite comfortably at that point, I thought, then, you know, there was definitely a route for them to go and win the game. But I think a really key thing happened almost right at the start of the second half when Lowe bust a couple of tackles up the left-hand flank, got an offload back inside. And it was just like, Okay, we've made it over the game line. We've busted through them now, and I think it gave the whole of Ireland uh, some confidence. Yeah, well, I, I was chatting to, to to rugby wife Harty in in, in Dublin, um, sort of at to- at half time, and I was just saying like, why aren't we being more direct? Just get, just be direct and get gain line. That is, you know, rugby is very simple. I think we were over complicating a little bit in the first half and looking for offloads because we knew how aggressive I think. Um, the Scots were and how good the D was, which it was. And then, yeah, when when you see Lowe come through and he bounces and then he give, it just, again, it's a lift to team, crowd, you get sort of cohesion and a bit of momentum and then boom. But that was, was massive. Um, and, and you know, I, I think he's a huge part of the Irish squad. I really do. I, th- I think, um, which is unusual for wingers <laughs> um, uh, to, to, to kind of, you know, create, momentum to drive your forwards on but you know that's the type of player he is um he was excellent today he was and just in complete contrast to the island kickoff i was talking about earlier then finn russell kicks that kickoff from oh Oh. sorry Ireland got a penalty directly from that play as well to make it 10-6 
And Finn Russell kicked the next kickoff directly yeah. into touch. And again, that is such a huge momentum shift. You know, you, as a pack of forwards, you get to run to the center spot, set up your scrum, and you've got a beautiful position when you're expecting to be having to try and clear your lines. And it was just like, if Scotland were going to absorb all of that uh, pressure that they were doing in the first half and continued to in the second half, when they got their chances to get out and play and do something, they had to take them. And they really didn't. And there were several more instances throughout the second half as well. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because, you know, just as a moment of uh, inspiration will drive a team on, a moment of that from your talisman, from your captain, when you're getting your arse handed to you in the, in the scrums, which they were, and, you know, it just, that's not good. It's just not, and it's not acceptable, really. And, um, you know, Gregor, you could see in the coaching box, wasn't particularly happy. It's it's a it's a poor mistake by a, an amazing player that you know you just can't do at this level. Yeah, and talking about the scrum uh, in the lead up to this game, I think I said something along the lines of Ferguson is becoming one of the very best tight heads in the world. But my word, Andrew Porter had him on toast today. I wonder if it's a bit to do with fatigue and tiredness. Ferguson's had to play a lot of minutes throughout the World Cup and through the Six Nations. And you can only take so much. I mean, Porter, I obviously rate as well, so it's not all one-sided. But, you know, I've not seen that Scotland scrum go back like that. You know, there's one that flipped almost all the way back over on itself for a very long time. So that yeah. was that was quite strange to see. Yeah, it was... I think he was per, particularly up for this game. Maybe he was one of the guys that got called out on the, on the video session on Monday, but he was really, really up for this game. Not only in the scrum where he was... Terrific, um, but in loose play as well. Um, you know the 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 sort of effort and drive he had was you know what we needed um, as a as a as a team. Um, after last week, he was he was really up for it. I, I loved watching him play today, and they left him on a fair amount of time as well. Yeah, he carried the ball a lot as well. He got his hands on the ball a heck of a lot. Um, Talking of someone else who was up for it, I really thought Ty Furlong was massively up for this game as well. He had a good scrummage in day two and he almost scored a try. Or did he actually score a try? What would have been your call, Alco? Because I think this one was really, really tight and it probably just goes down to what the referee's on-field decision was, yeah. to be honest. Well, I think it comes down to what, what, the, what the referee's uh, you know, original thought process was and goes Sorry. up to the to the uh, TMO and he didn't think he'd got it did he so um, you know you, you just gotta uh, I, I think it was a fair shout um, I've got no sort of complaints um, I'm going to be consistent on that I think if 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 he, if he had called it, it was a try and then it was disallowed then fair enough but I think he, he was pretty he, he, they'd said no no grounding sort of thing so you've just got to go with, with what they see I, I have to say the angles we get at, at Aviva are is better than anywhere. I mean, the, the amount of di and they kept coming. It was like, oh my god, just angles. Remember, <laughs> so um, no, I, th I think I was fair. I think he was this. I think if you look at him getting up off the ground, he he wasn't celebrating. I think he felt he'd knocked it on. Um, maybe he got down with pressure, but no. yeah, it's hard to tell. It was. I thought the the video angles were really kind of almost inconclusive, where you felt like you could see everything, yeah. but you couldn't really tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, quite quite strange. Um, picking somebody out from the Scotland team who I thought had an outstanding game today is uh, Andy Christie. So many real key moments on defence in particular. Obviously, Scotland were very much under the pump. And one, uh, when Nash stepped back inside, he stepped inside four players, I think, with one sidestep. Yeah. And it looked like he had to score. And I thought, just keep going for that gap. And then he's tried to he step inside Christie as again. well. Chris, yeah. Christie nailed him and forced a knock on too. So, I mean, it was great playing. And actually, when you look at it from his angle, there was a replay that kind of showed you what Nash would have seen. And it was less conclusive when you saw that. But it was a it was just brilliant tackle from Christie. Yeah, no, I, I thought Christie was amazing. We're, we're a big fan of him, aren't we? We've spoken to yeah. him about it quite a lot on, through the series once he's once he's got his um, starting uh, berth there. And he was he's he's a really good good player. Um, he's 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 quiet. He's not. He's not um, a uh, a Saracens Wuha guy. He he gets on with stuff, but he's he's exceptional. He's he's really really good. Um, and yeah, on that one, I, I think um, 
<laughs> I was about to say, I remember a time. Uh, stop, sh- shut up. Uh, <laughs> I-, I think he should have just gone for that. If, if it, he took an extra step, I think if he dives there, I think his momentum probably carries him over. But because it's he stepped right. again, um, then, uh, and don't get me wrong, it's an incredible tackle. But, but I think he, if he just kind of just gone, I think he might have done him, got in there. But um, I mean, he beaten four, and then Christie comes across. But amazing effort from from Christie to to stop him there, and and uh, you know because I think at that stage in the game, that could have opened floodgates, and and we might have been talking about a slightly different um, you know bonus point result. Maybe um, I think we might have got to three, maybe four, um, but it was terrific defence by Scotland there. Yeah, and uh, talking about key moments in the game and, and changes of flow. Scotland have absorbed all of this up to this point. It looked like Ireland were going to score two, three, maybe four times. But it's still only 10-6 at this stage. And Scotland have just had their scrum put into reverse on roller skates. And they've now got this scrum from the situation that we just talked about. They nailed their scrum. They got a really good scrum. Then they kicked a touch. One Ireland's line out. And then there was a really dumb penalty from Ferguson where somebody he was in front of somebody who sort of kicked it forward and he picked it up. Yeah. And it was like Scotland have worn all of that pressure and now a really stupid penalty has absolutely done them. And it was just like, I, I felt so sorry for Scotland in that moment just because they'd done all the right things and then just a tiny moment of indiscipline really let them down. Yeah, I, I, it's a funny one. I feel Scotland were like a nine, nine out of ten in defence, but in attack, were way off what we've seen. And as I said earlier, like I think I think Finn was anonymous. And, you know, and you're right. You know, they 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 absorbed all that pressure, they tackle so well, and then they make a dumb mistake. And and then, as we know, at, at this level, it's all about you know taking your opportunities and then riding the wave of momentum. And I just think they just couldn't quite capture that whereas well Ireland couldn't either I think it was a game of both teams sort of it was, there was clear anxiety in the air as we saw in the first game of, of, of uh, Super Saturday you know um, it was a weird weekend where it just shows where psychology and emotion is you know such a huge part of the game um, and um, they'll probably be in the video session looking at tiny bits where if they get that right then all of a sudden things change, you know. Um, you only need like three bits of play, and and you know you 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 know to take your point, they go from that there there, and if they don't, if they if they make that play happen, they probably score or they're in Ireland's, you know, red zone, and then they can heap pressure on. But just those games of of inches, you know, with just tiny little mistakes, and that's what what uh, counts at this level. It does. And I've got another example of one that happened almost straight after as well, because uh, I can't remember the scenario, but it was a kick. Lama knocked on a ball that looked like it was going to catch all day long. So Scotland get the ball back. This is on about the edge of Ireland's 22. And then they knock it on almost immediately. The referee had already called advantage over and Ringrose is away down the touchline, looking like he might score, but Van der Merwe tackled at him. And then a few phases later, a penalty and Porter crashes over from a little trick play. You don't see that too often. Yeah. Yeah. Ireland Ireland have been quite good with that stuff. A few times they've done that. They had a few in the World Cup. Loved it. You know, they're all, they're all going for Kelleher because, you know, it's either Sheehan or Kelleher, the hooker that takes it up and um, lovely little pop out the back to, um, and you know it's quite it's 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 a little bit of a risk there because we've seen so many times balls getting held up, um. But the ref was there, um, and was uh, was ready to pounce and, yeah, lovely little play, good score. It was, and the ref gave this one really quickly because I'm pretty convinced from where he was he couldn't actually see that ball grounded. But what I like about it actually is I think this is the way it should be refereed yeah. because you got the TMO on the truck. It looks like it's 99 percent a score. Um, you know, it looks like a try, right? And if it's not, then they'll bring it back on the TMO. Don't go to the TMO because you haven't seen it grounded. It's pretty much sure it is. So just give it. I thought we refereed that perfectly. Uh, now it's, so it's now 17-6, 15 minutes to go. And to be honest, at this point, the game just went, Ugh, because it was like Scotland had put all that effort in just to try and hold Ireland out. Couldn't manage it in the end. So little time left to try and go and get some scores. And it just felt like, you know, the energy went out of the game completely. 
Yeah, it, it was a bit of a weird. Yeah, it, it kind of flopped. But I have to say, uh, <laughs> as an Irishman, I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I just had nerves about it today a little bit, and um, yeah, as we we'll talk about in a second, it didn't quite pan out. But um, yeah, it did. It, it did kind of feel like that was that was it, and p- particularly because of the last sort of two three games we've had against Scotland, where we've you know, we've absolutely wiped the floor with them. That was not the case today, but it felt like we've we kind of got over the hump and the game was was done, sort of thing. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but it wasn't. Hugh Jones just shook what? himself God. away from Robbie Henshaw. Yeah, dashed through another couple of tackles, sidestepped James Lowe, I think it was, to yeah. get under under the sticks untouched. And at seventeen thirteen, there was just a hint. It yeah. was just a moment because Scotland got the ball back from the kickoff and looked threatening. They looked threatening for about all of 10 seconds before they knocked the ball on. Yeah, I mean, I could, exactly. <laughs> you're literally, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're unearthing my, my sort of feelings. And uh, I was like, <laughs> shall, I, shall I open a glass of uh, Prosecco or shall I have a glass of red breast and it was a bit of a red breast because I wasn't quite sure it was I was like Sh- this could go really Pete Tong here because great try brilliant step I mean it was a terrible tackle from from Henshaw uh, or attempt to tackle and he's under the post and, the, and because he's under the post it's like oh hang on they can nick this here um, and because of what happened last week as well all of a sudden as you know as a human you're like oh no what's gonna happen um because normally like last week we didn't kill the game we didn't kill the game and then what you saw then was presumably they'd added a chat and a bit of a shake-up to say look we know how to close games off we've done it loads of times before close the game off yeah and we <laughs> <laughs> and they did James Lowe kicks the ball high into the stand Ireland deserved Six Nations champions how do you feel Alco? Um. oh okay uh, look I'm I'm massively happy I am still got a bit of a hangover from last week I think um, I, th- I think the goal for this team was to go and do back-to-back Grand Slams, but I think to not be happy or, n- well, to not be really happy and thankful for what we have would be really cocky and horrible because, you know, I'm a rugby fan and, and these things don't come easy. You know, uh, this is the best period of Irish rugby in, since in my lifetime ever. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted and, and um, glad we've c- bounced back from last week. Um, show glimpses of what we can do and we can kick on now. I think there's going to be a bit of a change in the guard in our um, tour to South Africa this summer. And we've got New Zealand in November. Um, but yeah, I'm, I am uh, massively, massively happy um, and I can you know take take the mickey out of all my Celtic brothers and my, um, my English, Italian and French brothers as well. <laughs> um... Just a word for Peter Omani because I thought he looked he looked incredibly stressed on the bench after he got replaced. Like he wasn't enjoying any of the moments at all. And in the post match interview, he was pressured about whether this was his last game. I think the interviewer asked him at least a couple of times, and he yeah. just looked he just looked stressed. So I just feel for him. You know, he's only just become captain. He's led his side to a Six Nations title. I hope he can let all that go, all the pressure that he's had this week and have a really good night and, and then whatever decisions need to be made will be made in due course. Yeah, he, look, he's he's a very intense individual. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not going to feel sorry for him because of that because that's what his greatness has been. Um, and so he needs to, you know, juggle that um, with what he's going to do next. And um, and that's, you know, he, he's been uh, one of the best uh, captains um or players, should I say, that we've had and captains that Munster have had. He, he's, an, he's an incredible individual, both on and off the pitch. Um, I don't know what he's going to do next. Uh, you know, he, I don't want to, uh, you know, the press shouldn't talk him into retirement by any stretch. If he's good to go, he's good to go. Let him keep playing. If if, if Faz thinks he's good to go, let him keep playing. Um, you know, it's slightly different to to North. Uh, unless, unless he's got a deal to play in, Abroad, maybe he has. You know, he he might. I don't. I don't think so. I'd, 
I don't see him going to Japan and letting his lawn, um, you know, get overgrown grown weeds. I, I don't see him leaving Munster. And maybe he's got a coaching gig. I, I don't know. I, I personally hope he stays on because I think he's got a lot to give. And, and seeing what um, some of the South African players gave to the World Cup last year, um, who were of similar age, you know, where he's going to be, end up, you know what, I don't think age should be a barrier. If he's fit and he's good, let him keep playing. But um, he's been an incredible soul worth for, for particularly for Munster uh, and for Ireland, obviously, um, you know, uh, all power to him. And I, and I hope um, I hope he makes the right decision for him and not what media wants or anything like that. Yeah, 100%. Okay, let's wrap this one up. That's what we think, people. That's what we... You know, Ireland fully deserved champions, but how do you think the game went? Were there any key tactical points that you think we missed or, you know, that, that really played a pivotal part that we didn't see? Any players that we didn't pick out that you thought were really key in their team's performances? We'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps people find it. Elko, thank you so much and congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate us. Thank you very much. And um, roll on 2025. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And people at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. Don't forget to get out and play.